Good morrow, people of the internet, and welcome to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Yes. Now, humor if you look down there to the uh, corner there at the um, left side of the screen and the very bottom, 2001 to 2005. You may be thinking, James, this isn't an old game. How dare you play this? How dare you replace... What was the game before? Mega Man with this new game. I I wanted to play this and I couldn't be bothered to wait after I finish Super Meat Boy. So this is the old uh, uh, quotation mark game we're playing now. I don't care. Let's carry. Let's do this. The first turnabout. Confirm. I should probably start a timer. First turnabout. Episode one. There's been a murder. Oh, nice blood effect. So he's actually put the things in the panel. Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this! I, I've got to find someone to pin this on. Someone like him! I'll make it look like he did it! August 3rd, 9.47am, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number 2. Boy, am I nervous. Great! Oh, oh, hiya, Chief. You got it made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not if everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. I can't read, apparently. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Yes, yeah, sock client. Uh, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before the case? Yeah. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out. Ah, uh, that's uh, the male voice. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I own that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! Isn't that your client screaming over there? Y yeah, that's him. Death! Despair! Oh! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Oh, I actually have to click it now. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, uh, Nick, you gotta tell me who took my baby away. Hmm. Person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. The first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was unlucky was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. HA! Butts! My best friend since grade school. Ask what a saying. When something smells, it's usually the butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself into trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, and I owe him one, which is why I took this case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do. I might be uh, not reading it perfectly, so if, if you're reading that and I'm not reading it perfectly, just because I feel more comfortable saying it how I'm saying it. Whoa. Whoa! The court is now in session. 
for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? I I yes, Your Honor. I'm, uh, a little nervous. The conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you control your nerves. Th thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have testers ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. The, um, hand shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant of this case, Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? I know this one. Got to read the case report over cover to cover so many times. It's... Wait. Oh no! No! No way! I could go! I'm drawing a total blank here! Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name! Oh, the victim, uh, of course I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the defendant's name is listed in the court record. Just touch the court record button to check it anytime, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you, alright? Court record. We got Cindy's autopsy, the case. Uh, see from Mia Faye. Uh, Cindy profiles. Uh, Mia Faye, like Bart's. Cindy Stone, that's the victim. Okay, that's cool. Let's hear your answer. Who is the victim in this case? Uh, Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> because I don't feel relaxed. That's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what the object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. It's a weapon to as evidence for his pain. Uh, let's check that. A uh, statue in the shape of the thinker is rather heavy. Okay. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you had in court. Touch the court record button to check the court record frequently. Oh, there's the gavel. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Uh, Chief, what do I do now? Pay, atten pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything uh, unfortunate. Oh no. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We are Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony! Uh-oh. -uh. Didn't they all die? I wasn't dumb, she just wasn't taking my phone calls, or seeing me, th ever. What is it to you, anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you, and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. That's what added to the court record. Let's look at that quickly. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Passport. 
The victim apparently arrived home from Paris on 7th day, the day before the murder. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, all the men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. DUDE! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right, I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry's a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Yet yeah, stop him! My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case! Ugh, nah. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That tin sea dog! I'm gonna die! I'm gonna drop dead! Yeah, and when I met her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this! Oh, my voice killed me. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? <laughs> well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Oh no, he went. What do I do? Have him, on have him answer honestly. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth! Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there, I went. Order! Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill! She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. Objection! Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime! Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. Uh, this is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawhead to the stand. Mr. Sawhead, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is that correct? Oh yes, yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawhead, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witnesses account. Here we go. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found quail, and myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in our apartment wasn't working. Oh no! I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 10 p.m. 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not f function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your pursuit there. Ooh, blackout record added to the court. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes! Uh, yes, Your Honor? Let's check that out. Electricity in Mr. Stone's building was cut out noon at 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Could be useful. You may begin your cross examination! C cross examination? Y Your Honor? Alright, oh, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, 
Uh, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in this testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Huh? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in here. First, find the contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Uh, okay. Touch the court record button and point out the contradictions of the testimony. Okay. First examination. Go to George Store selling subscriptions when I saw a man playing in an apartment. Thought he must be in a hurry, because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead. Proud of fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. Hold it! You thought to call the police? Does that mean you didn't actually call them? Please, please, listen to the rest of the testimony. You thought to call the police. What happened next? However, the phone in an apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. But... Okay. OBJECTION! Your Honor! What do you think about the witness's statement? Uh, I'm not sure I follow. It clearly uh, contradicts the... Um, I thought... You don't sound very convinced, Mr. Wright. Objection overruled. I don't think that won't be any points with the judge. Okay. There's one. Yeah. Ha! -ha! Objection! Objection! You found the body at 1 p.m.? You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe! Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy knows that the time of death of at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Uh, that, oh, uh, objection! This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sort, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? Uh, I, uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Good job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies always get big. Beget more lies. That's a word. See through one, and the whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? There we go. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1pm. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Let's cross-examine this. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right! You know what to do. I've got this one. I already know what to do. I read it earlier. Okay. <sighs> Objection! Hold it right there! The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery! And this record proves it! You couldn't have heard a television! Or a video! God! I... Well... Uh, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sort? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Wait! I remember now! Mr. Sort, the court would prefer to hear the accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, uh, uh you seem rather, uh, distraught. Urgh. 
My apologies, Your Honor. It uh, must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Short. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock on the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. But the murder weapon wasn't a clock. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Name the time. Okay. Actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? OBJECTION! Wait just a moment! The murder weapon wasn't a clock! It was a statue! Now how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sort! Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock! Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it, and it says the time out loud. And it, as it doesn't look like a clock, I submit it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yes, I do! Your Honor, there's a gaping hole in the witness testimony! The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction! Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... went into the apartment! You're lying! You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do one better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her! You struck her with the clock, and shh, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard! Order! Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. It's all going down now, isn't it, guys? I really love this game. I love this game. Mr. Sort, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. The voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Objection! What? What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... That day... I never... Look... Uh, the guy, uh, the clock, I heard, uh, no, I mean, I saw, uh, uh. <laughs> I love this game so much. Shut up, shut up, shut up, I hate you. I, it was him, I tell you, I saw him, he killed her, and he said, burn, burn, give him death. Order, order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor. You claim the sound witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is writing on this. I better think through carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Hurt was definitely from this clock. A fact which is clear if you examine the clock's batteries. All you have to do is examine the batteries. Indeed, the batteries are in the right way. The clock seems to be working fine. What exactly did you mean, Mr. Wright? Yes, the clock was working fine. Yes, and? Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I think I got confused back that and all those testimonies. Mr. Wright, I expect more from a lawyer in this court. Even if it is your first day, I'm afraid I have to penalize you. Try to think things through more carefully. Y yes, Your Honor. As I was saying... Okay, he's writing this. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sword heard was definitely this clock. In fact, it's clear if you simply try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? 
I asked the court to listen very carefully. I think it's age 25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah! As you can see, this plot is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy that Mr. Sora heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sort, try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing. Oh, uh, what's he talking about? Well, it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! Duh, he's right. How am I gonna prove that? Damn it! I'm so close! Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Y yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you induct the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sart. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Great game, guys. Not so fast, Mr. Sart! Mia, I mean, Chief! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away! Not like this! Thick! But, Chief, it's over! I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder! Nobody can prove that! Um, well, yes. That doesn't mean you can't still win! Try thinking out of the box! Don't waste time doubting the facts! Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it! Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason, and you'll have your proof! Right, right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes! Don't you see? The clock! The passport! The journey! Wait! Maybe I can prove it! Must have evidence on what that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course! There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt! <laughs> Tough words! Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. The passport. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris. Paris! The time zone between Paris and Japan is three hours, I think. I think this is Japan, it might be America. But look, 7.30. The victim had just returned home from before the day of the murder! We all know the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours! I mean 9 hours, I mean 9. When it's 4 a.m., 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there! The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast! The victim had reset her clock since returning home! That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the apartment was wrong! Proof enough for you, Mr. Sort! Or should I say, Mr. Jinich? Nah. <laughs> Order! Order, I say! Well, this case was suddenly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client. He uh, was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true com culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is an only a formality, but the court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, NOT GUILTY! I can't scream. Yeah! Not guilty! And with that, the court is adjourned! Nice.
turns out that Frank Sartre was a common burglar. He poses the newspaper salesman to check out and see if people were out of the house that day. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sartre let himself in to do this dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sartre grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. You know, I, there's not really much speaking room. There's a lot of text, and if I'm not going to talk, I'm probably not going to talk as much in this uh, playthrough. I'm probably going to be reading a lot more. August 3rd, 2 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby number 2. Oh, so can't believe we won. Great, good job in there. Congratulations. Uh, th thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've been on a trial with such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry! You're supposed to be happy! What's wrong now? Ah, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no! I mean, bad! Bad, bad, bad! Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But... But my Cindy Windy is gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... <sighs> Never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Uh, Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner, movie, my treat. Oh, no, I can... Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her, and one for me. Really? You, uh, made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick, and and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't, don't think, don't that make you wanna just cry, Larry? You so sure? Uh, excuse me. I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't get it. You don't gotta sympathize with me, okay? Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Let's give him my item now. Uh, but then check. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you want just some chump to her. Huh? Where did you get the clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. <laughs> she probably just needed a clock, that's all. Think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. Can I ask you to be my lawyer? Really? I am. Thanks. Oh, that made him feel a little bad. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things can change depending on how you look at them. People, too. You never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Go strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner on me? Or drink a toast to innocent butts? Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part at least. You have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe. Over drinks? And so, my first trial came to a close. 
Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me. Unless you count the clock he gave me. Uh... I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And I promised to tell the chief about me and Larry. It would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. The end! That's it guys, game over, we beat the game, that's the entire playthrough. <laughs> Imagine. Brand new episode has been added! Turn them out sisters. Nice. Cool. Uh, save, yep. Saving, saving, the saving song, yeah! Well, guys, we cleared our best friend of murder and found the actual true murderer. Next time on Phoenix Wright, we'll go into episode 2, Turnabout Sisters. See ya!